Hey everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Practina 2A made by KW Camera Works. A little, little bit dusty from, okay, that's, that's fine. This is an interchangeable lens SLR. It has no meter built into the camera though there were some metering prisms available. Don't have one. Shutter speeds on this camera were one second to, to one one thousandth of a second and bulb and those are up here around the film advance uh, dial. It had viewfinder magnification based on the prism, but I could not find the specs for the magnification anywhere. Uh, this was a pretty high-end camera, so it was probably pretty darn close to standard magnification with probably pretty close to full frame coverage. Had a plain matte focusing screen. Here you go, you can see the plain matte focusing screen. And so there's no information on it. No, it doesn't have any guide information. It's just a uh, plain focusing screen. So the, the flash sync on this camera for X flashes is one, oh, I'm sorry, is one fiftieth of a second on this camera. So if you're going to use a flash, you need to set it at the flash speed. And on this camera, um, apparently it only works properly at the flash sync speed, though um, I have to imagine at speeds like 1 15th and slower, it should also work properly. The, um, I was reading the uh, Practina book and it said to set it at 1 50th and um, no other speed, but it should still work slower than that. At any rate, flash sync on this is the lightning bolt speed. There we go. The target market for this camera was advanced and probably some professional use, early 35 millimeter professional use. This has uh, a lot of good capabilities, very fast shutter speed for its time, and it is built exceedingly well. I mean, in, in addition to the magnificent build quality in the camera, it also had, had a very good supporting lens lineup made by top-notch German lens makers. It was produced by KW, which Apologize to all my German viewers for what I'm about to do to your language here. Camber work Niederschlitz, set, no, Niedersedlitz. Ne, yeah, Niedersedlitz, that's it. Uh, in Dresden, East Germany, from, from 1958 to 1959. So really less than two years for this camera's production. It was preceded by the Practina FX, which is this guy right here. There's not a whole lot of outward difference, but uh, the FX is gonna have its own video. And it was followed by nothing. It was concurrent with the Pentona, the Practica 4, I think the Practica 4, and, and those were the two cameras that KW was making at the same time. And then it was followed by nothing. This was the end of the Practina line. So if you have a Practina 2A, we'll go over all the features on it and start talking about what they are. In video two, we'll talk about what they do. Technically on the front of the camera, we have the strap lugs here. We have the film type reminder dial over here. And what this does is uh, lets you remember what type of film you're using as well as the speed and it allows you to control the flash. So the way I use this and I believe the way that it's supposed to be used is that red dot over the flash indicator is your index, right? Because it moves with your film type to select different types of flashes. So you just want to set your film ISO or type color. For your color films, it's tungsten or daylight or tungsten or daylight. Those would have different speed indications. And then your ISO. ASA and ISO are the same number. So realistically today, whatever your film speed is in ISO is just what you would want to set here to remember what speed film you're using. Then under that, you can select different types of bulbs, X, F, and FP. X is a modern flash sync. It's what you're gonna use if you're gonna use a flash with this camera today. F and FP were different types of bulbs. If you set your camera to these settings and use a modern flash, the timing will not be correct and your flash will not fire when it needs to to give you a proper um, flash illumination with a modern flash. So just keep your flash settings set to X. Film rewind knob, Germany, USSR occupied, with an arrow to tell you which direction to advance. Here we have your removable, removable prism, KW logo, shutter speed selector, 
this is your frame count um, dial underneath the film advance knob right here. The, the frame counter is manually reset when you put in a new roll of film. We'll see how to do that in video two. Switch over to the front of the camera here and we have the shutter release. This is a uh, viewfinder window so that if you don't want to use the prism you don't have to. Uh, I think maybe this was just to help people who had been used to using rangefinder and viewfinder cameras get into SLR use or this could be very useful if you had the hip finder the waist finder rather prism on and just wanted to hold it up to your face. These fell out of favor. There weren't too many cameras that I can think of after maybe none after the 50s that also included this because they weren't a feature people really used and they were added complexity in the construction process. Here we have the breech lock system, self timer, flash PC port and inside this mechanism here you can see the um, there we go, the aperture connection right there. Some of the Practinas had a connection for an automatic aperture. Some of them didn't. Uh, I don't have any Practina native mount lenses. I only have some T-mount lenses and a Practina T-mount adapter. So I can't show you exactly how that interface works. But um, uh, if you have a Practina and have some preset lenses, any preset lens and Practina mount will work just fine. On the back of the camera, we have the viewfinder porthole, the prism viewfinder window, the film back. On the camera's bottom, we have the tripod socket, the prism release lock right here. If you can see that red dot, you can take the prism off. If you can't, you cannot take the prism off. Film rewind button and motor drive mechanical connection. And also over here, we have the film back release. Inside of the camera, we have the film cassette chamber, which is where in video two we'll put the film to load it. Film guide rails right here that help the film move across the, uh, the shutter opening right here, shutter curtain. The way that the film guide rails move is that when this is sandwiched, when, when the uh, film back is in place, the pressure plate sandwiches up against the film guide rails and advances the, and, it, and it keeps the film flat on plane so that the light is focused properly. Film tension sprocket over here, which keeps tension on the film so that it doesn't pull itself back with spring memory. Because the spring memory is built into the film because it's plastic and so it wants to curl because it's been stored that way for who knows how long. And so given enough time, that curl will pull the film back into the cassette film take up spool, film pressure plate, and film cassette alignment and retaining spring. This helps the cassette stay properly aligned to feed the film through the camera. And of course, then the film back is re fully removable, then just goes back on that way. So some things not to do with your Practina, oops, Practina, don't do that, don't drop the prism. With your Practina FX are don't store the camera with the shutter ready to fire. So before you put this away for the night, trigger the shutter. It's an old camera and you don't want to stress the springs and the mechanical systems in it if you don't have to. So, and keeping the, cutter, the, the shutter cocked will stress those mechanical systems and make the shutter timing unreliable. Don't touch the shutter curtain itself and don't touch the mirror. If you touch the curtain, that's a really good way to brick your shutter. And if you touch the mirror, that's a really good way to get fingerprints on it, which can impair your ability to focus. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because the heat can damage them, can cause the oils to get really thin on them uh, and get to places where they shouldn't be, especially apertures. But moreover, leaving your cameras, camera gear in your car is a good way to have your car window broken and your camera gear stolen. Uh, also, cold temperature can cause the oils in the camera and lens to break down and get really gummy and then not work properly. Don't store your camera gear in a plastic bag or box as that can allow fungus to grow on the lenses or in the leather of the camera. And don't let your camera get wet. It's not weather sealed and get your camera getting wet can cause it to um, rust and not work anymore. And just remember your, your pre KW Practina 2A is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. 
And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's it for the first video. We just talked about what everything is. And then in the second video, we're gonna talk about what everything does.